This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to make a beautiful website. The castle. The people what they want. No. Real talk about moving in with my long distance partner. That is something I hate. You know things are bad when I have eye patches on. Today is the day. I am picking my boyfriend up from the airport, doing my last minute bits around the flat. Did so much last night, like literally scrubbed the floors on my hands and knees, got all like the old scuffs up, changed the bedding, like scrubbed the bath, cleaned out the cabinet. I was just on one and it was also after a full day of work and then I had to go back to work after I did it. So honestly, it felt like I was manual laboring for about 24 hours. The flat is immaculate and just like I made space in the closet. Couldn't get to bed till five with the excitement. Just finished up some like morning work bits. I just had some like lover Sunday orders to take care of. Thank you by the way for anyone that's ordered. It's so cool seeing everyone wear the stuff and it's been going really well. Hey, hi, hello from future editing Tara. Zipping in real quick because on the topic of lover Sunday, I'm actually donating all of the profits from any purchase of a lover Sunday t-shirt or a best-selling crop sweater to the UN Ukrainian Humanitarian Crisis Fund. Um, I did it over on Instagram already. If you were thinking of getting one of those pieces, then there's no better time to support. It'll be running from 24 hours from the date this goes live, just because I want to get all of the funds over as quickly as possible by hopefully end of day, Monday, Tuesday type of thing. So yeah, please consider supporting. Link and information will be in the description. So happy how volume one went. I definitely want to design um, more things for that. The manual labor is done. I'm ready to receive him in more weight. <laughs> no. This isn't a warm welcome. I've just set up a little kind of a mini bar, but we both love cocktails, um, love going out for them. So finally got my own cocktail shaker set. Didn't really have a reason to have one before, but I envision us making or experimenting quite a bit. Got all of the ingredients to his favorite cocktail. It's a Manhattan and I just think that's so, kind of cliche, kind of cute. We are in Brooklyn, not Manhattan, but you know, it's on theme. Luxardo cherries. If you've ever had a really good cocktail and you're like, what is in these cherries? Creme de la creme of cocktail cherries, apparently. I know it feels like I'm going to a lot of effort, but I know he'd do the same and has done for me. <laughs> Guys, I'm writing a welcome to New York sign. I've never done this for anyone in my life. Kind of joked about it and I'm gonna do it. I'm going to stop by the shop if I have time and get a bunch of baby's breath flowers. Give your man flowers, why not? Girls go on about getting flowers all the time, but they never give them. And I feel like flowers make everyone happy. Okay, I like it, Picasso. It's not like I went to art school for three years. Oh my God, I actually feel sick. Also not wise, I had that coffee right before jumping in an Uber. I can't believe I'm saying this, but my man is in the shower. I did promise you a recipe. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make fancy beans on toast. I'm gonna to boil some gorgeous, my favorite, favorite, favorite um, blue happy eggs. In the pan, I'm gonna wilt some spinach and kind of do beans on toast with a twist. So I'll add in these uh, Heinz baked beans I have left and some creme fraiche, creamy spinachy beans on toast situation throw the eggs on top. I don't know if it will look good, but I know it's gonna taste good.
added a little bit too much creme fraiche, so plan B is adding some sweet tomatoes in. Eat away, baby. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Give the people what they want after me going on about you for such a long time. Cutie, cutie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. You look very tall if I like, I'm like this. Say hello. No. No. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. He's shy. Go um, show him what the neighborhood's like, get a coffee. I just put sticker dumplings, but what I've been doing is, well, first I, um, fried them so they're crispy crispy on the bottom then I steamed them in this nice very convenient in this very nice uh, convenient air place pan which has a lid and them up and then I kind of finish it off with some what is this uh, cornstarch and water just like teensy little bits in the gaps to kind of make this big old crispy dumpling pancake We can't be the only couple that loves doing the washing up before we've even eat. <laughs> Let's ignore the tripod reflection, but I've put on a bit of makeup for you guys. I'm actually getting dressed. I'm wearing my Stan Rays, which I got kind of the summer and they didn't really get the wear that they should have because I don't know, they were just, it was too warm for the summer. But I'm wearing them today as a change from the Dickies. I think I'm gonna wear it with my own t-shirt today, a little bit of navy and navy color blocking. Also, the reason I am in my bra is because I know you guys love my lingerie recommendations. Massively into comfy underwear that still makes you look and feel sexy because I think it's just a really important thing for my own personal, like at home, divine feminine energy routines. But I wanted to recommend this one because as you can see, it's kind of like a, like a see-through stripey mesh, which is probably one of my favorite fabrics because it is so comfy. I really like this one. It's not like crazy supportive. It's just a comfy bralette. Keeps the girls relatively in place. I just regret not buying the bottoms in a small. I got the top in a small and the bottoms in a medium. I feel like this is a bit more of an accurate representation of my hair. Um, I've zoomed the camera in a bit. The fit, oh God, I just love the fit of these pants. They're so high-waisted. Um, they definitely don't feel as starchy and rigid as when I first got them. Structure, like sometimes you have to go rigid to get this gorge structured fit. Special offer just today, some free toes. Usually with my posting schedule, my videos are about two weeks behind real time. So like obviously Instagram is where I share like things more in the moment. The vlogs are kind of like a recap and 
I like to kind of include extra things and be a bit more chatty on here. It's actually been three weeks since my boyfriend initially touched down and got here and a lot has happened since then, I feel. I feel like I've like gathered some of my thoughts. Before we get into it, big shout out to my monthly sponsors, Squarespace, which I know you've all heard of many times on my channel before, but every single month, more and more of you sign up, I can see from the stats. So if you are one of those people that need a website anytime soon, Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to start from scratch. Buy your website domain name, choose one of their award-winning templates, upload your content, customize how you want your website to look, add different functions for your needs. Boom, you're up and running in no time. Whether you need a blog, an e-portfolio to showcase your work, an e-commerce online business like myself, I sell my lover Sunday pieces over on my Squarespace website. Even ways to monetize the content on your website Right now through features like members area where you can create exclusive members only content. The Squarespace the world is your oyster. If you don't believe me, you can give it a go. You can get a two week free trial with my link down in the description bar or on the screen squarespace.com slash termer and you can use my code termer for 10% off your future billing. We will talk about moving in with my long distance partner. I think the montage shared kind of like his first week or two here. I'm kind of an open book when it comes to like my anxieties and my concerns. I'm nervous to kind of move in with someone again. I do think we had enough tester feelers before this kind of stint together that I was kind of comfortable moving in and like he knows me well enough at this point. I think living in a studio though, where there's like no separation, no rooms, um, I think there's definitely another level of comfortability that's been reached in our relationship. It took a few days to settle in and I think because I know what that's like to move to kind of like a different continent and be away from what you know, that's always kind of an unsettling time for someone. So I was very like aware of that for him. So I think I tried to make him as comfortable as possible, like slowly introduce him to the neighborhood, walk around. And after about a week, I honestly did feel like he was super settled. The way you, sometimes you move somewhere and you're just like instantly, you're like immediately, no immediately not the vibe. Even though it's not for an extremely long period of time, I'm just still really happy that he likes it here. Obviously there's like little parts where he's like, what if he gets here and he just absolutely hates it. But I knew that he would like it and he does. And I think he's settled so quickly, loves the lifestyle here. I think if you're like me and you're very protective over your space and a bit of a perfectionist over your space, and you're welcoming somebody into your home, obviously nothing's changing too much for you, but you do need to be like very conscious of the fact that someone's like packed up their life. Uneasy feeling as that can be for you, I think you always have to like make sure that there is some um, compassion and understanding there. It's, it's important to kind of leave room for change and find their place in your space. I think the first week or so I was like, ah, that doesn't go there and blah, blah, blah. But like to be fair to him, like he's the kind of guy, like I only need to say something once and I don't need to repeat myself. And that is truly a relief. He's made the transition as easy as it could be. Weird timing, because last night I was on TikTok and I've never seen content that pinpoints exactly how I feel or have felt in the past. It was kind of just like a little montage going through her apartment. She said, in my in my waking up to my little apartment messier than I'd prefer, almost feeling annoyed, but then realizing that matters 0% in the long run and the beautiful night I shared with my partner means more, in quotation, phase of growth. The title of the TikTok, which absolutely killed me, was when you no longer have a death grip on perfection. I already had made those compromises in my mind. Like for example, this kind of area, like my bed and my shooting area, I'm like, you know what? I really like this part of the apartment to be tidy. Um, my partner understands that he goes out of his way to like keep it tidy now. My compromise is that kind of everything past the beams, like the threshold into the kitchen and the dining area is kind of messy a lot of the time. And that's okay and that's fine just because i've been home so much recently and i've spent so much time with my partner in the last year it's not really something i felt as much but in the past i've been very open with talking about this especially it's just something i want to reference for all of my like long distance lovers out there who are about to move in with their other half and um, because it's something not a lot of people talk about i talked about it years ago in a video um when my past partner moved in with me but when you move in with a long distance partner it takes a second for your energies to like align. And it can be a bit disconcerting at first because you're so excited and you're like, oh my God, new chapter. And then you move in together and the energy is just like a little off because an emotional connection is very different to a physical connection. And I feel like when you move in 
with a long distance partner, it's not that it's wrong. It's just, it takes a couple of days, sometimes a couple of weeks to actually catch up, like have my physical energy connection with the person catch up to the, the emotional. But there's couples out there, you know, that haven't spent physical time with each other for six months, eight months, a year, sometimes two years with the pandemic. It really put you off because it can make you second guess your connection or if you've made the right choice. Um, but I just want to let you know that's relatively normal. Good, like the only weird thing is obviously living in a studio. There's no separation. So we work together a lot here, but we've kind of come up with little routines that kind of make that exciting like sometimes we'll move the dining table to the window and create kind of like a co-working space like lunch together so we're quite enjoying that i think because we're similar people we've adjusted really well and we still kind of make time to do our own things watch our own shows he'll catch up on his sports while i do something else that kind of thing we'll say absolutely hate shooting jobs in front of him like there's been so many campaigns that I've just had to shoot in the loft and do voiceovers and do multiple takes. That is something I hate. I'm having so much fun. Like I think I mentioned it in past vlog that um, I was feeling like when he got here that I would be able to experience New York in a new way that I really hadn't been able to do quite on my own that I tried sometimes, but you know, it is a different experience kind of enjoying something you love um with someone you love some road trips planned which you'll be seeing in future vlogs so it'll just be nice to be out of the apartment and get some other kind of uh, vlog footage and new memories and things to share because obviously it's just been so much of me in the apartment for the last two years i was doing this like little catch-up i took to instagram and asked you guys did you want me to touch on anything in regards to moving in with a partner things like that who knows it might be helpful for you in the future even if you're single also if you just notice a drop in quality that is because i have dropped the quality because my i cannot deal with my camera cutting out every five minutes while trying to shoot in 4k a lot of how do you find time for yourself how do you do it in a studio i think i kind of answered those ones already but someone said finding alone time and maintaining the strong sense of self i gained through independence. Obviously, if there's anything I've learned the hard way, it is to build a strong foundational sense of self and who you are. It's not necessary for a relationship, but it's a really healthy way um, to approach a relationship. It helps you make better decisions and make better boundaries in one. And I think anytime you feel the codependence creeping in, like there's nothing wrong with loving being around someone and wanting to spend more time with them. But if you feel yourself leaning into that codependent zone that feels a little icky, a little bit like, I can't enjoy anything without this person, nothing is as good as being with this person, then I would throw yourself into the things that you really love and enjoy outside of your relationship, the things you were doing for your relationship, whether it just be hanging out with your friends or your hobbies, like everything else you put in the extra effort to keep yourself invested in those things. And I think that um, it just all contributes to, to being an individual. How do you deal with less personal space? Um, honestly, I think I was ready for it, like I mentioned before, but also I'm with someone who's very respectful. You know, we're both 30 years old, we're both fully fledged adults. He carries himself like an adult and not a boy. He respects my space and I think both of us are quite independent people and I know that he can go to the coffee shop and I can stay at home. I think there's nothing wrong with requesting that personal space if you need it in a really lovely and polite, soft, compassionate way. You know, if I feel like I'm moody or I need to do the things that I want to do, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to ask him to leave for a couple of hours. Um, Cause I know that if he needed that time, I would also give him that courtesy. Do you think you need to live with someone before you marry them or not necessarily? Not necessarily, people have done it before and it's worked out fine. Does it help massively? Absolutely, I truly do not feel like you know someone until you've lived with them. I'm telling you how they put away their laundry, how they do the dishes, how they do the everyday stuff and how you maintain a home together is a massive make or break for a relationship. For me, it's like a massive thing. It's like a shared value, non-negotiable for me personally. Balance energies when you're in different moods. Um, I think you have to be really perceptive and not all men are very perceptive and um, by men i mean like male energies too if it's a non-heterosexual relationship i feel like there's generally a more feminine energy and a more masculine energy and i think the more masculine can be a bit like 
you know, non-perceptive to change the mood and things like that. Um, I would say like, don't be afraid to express, like express, communicate. If you are feeling off or you've picked up on someone else's vibe being off, um, try to address it honestly as soon as possible. The other person may need a bit of extra time to like wrap their thoughts around why they're feeling weird or if they're in a bit of a mood. It's hard to spot a mood sometimes, even if you're in one yourself. You need to feck off for an hour. Like sometimes for me, if I'm frustrated, I just like don't really want to talk that much. So like I'll express that and I'll let the mood pass and give it room to like move on and um, while still being kind of like respectful and obviously loving. It's not your fault if someone is in a mood and i feel like i see that a lot in women is like they feel like responsible bit of a mood in a sense that they're like rude to you just take yourself away like you don't need to be in that energy like if you live with someone who's not as bothered with cleaning as you are i don't even think this goes with cleaning i think it goes with anything that's important to you within your home like when you start to share a space with the person you kind of have to like align your values and have those discussions and like sometimes somebody will not understand why something is so important to you and i think it's your responsibility to explain it like once hopefully you won't need to repeat yourself um because i know that that is very frustrating when someone just doesn't get it anything where there's like a bit of a dynamic conflict whereas like cleaning is very important to you and it may not be for someone else it's a funny one because like you have to kind of look at like what do you get out of the relationship and i think that like relationships can work if there's like balance if there's enough pros to outweigh the annoying things one person might do the cleaning but then the other person might take out the trash or cook or you know stuff like that that kind of balances out uh, the priorities in the home if you're not getting other things that you need out of the relationship to fulfill you then the things that bother you are going i think to feel so much more intensified and you're going to hyper focus on them and they're going to make you a lot more frustrated with yourself and your partner than maybe they ought to be sometimes you meet people that like raise your own standard about what you think is out there and like for me this relationship has kind of been that like it's raised the bar in terms of the expectations i have on a man in terms of their responsibility in the home and how much that they can contribute but those things if it's a priority if they wanted to they would and some men just like living in their own dirty sheets for five weeks don't blame your man blame their mother because they absolutely spoiled them rotten did all of their washing their laundry never had to make a meal for them and then they get into a relationship it doesn't need to be a man a woman thing it needs to be more of like a human being and whether they respect and love their space or not you know living with a partner makes it hard to go through with a breakup and get through it thoughts I resonate with this one so hard i think when you're living with a partner and you know it isn't right and whether something has happened or not because i've been in both situations where like an event has happened and i really should have left also been in the situation where it's just like nothing is particularly wrong at that time and i still should have left even if a relationship is okay but not great and it's not something you are more happy in than you are sad i think when you're living with the person it's just it's so hard to see the way out because you feel so interconnected your life so feels so intertwined and you kind of use it as an excuse to stay in the situation and um, my advice would be to seek a support system that support system can be one person but i think it can be hard to see the wood the wood from the trees like it can be hard to see how you're gonna maneuver your life or what life will be like or how to even take the first step and sometimes like telling you know a family member a friend somebody that can help you out of the situation you don't have to have all of the answers about how you're going to do it you just need to kind of like take that first step and i find that like sharing um your issues is a big thing because there can be a lot of shame around leaving a relationship and admitting that you're ready to kind of give up or throw the towel in and sometimes the pride and get the better of us i think there's the emotional battle but there's also the financial battle like where are you going to go i have a lease all of that stuff that legally ties you into things but i promise you there is always a way out like i know those things can be really insurmountable it happens to people every single day and there's you know if you really want to get out of a situation you can you're just saving your own time and you don't need to wait till the lease is finished 99 percent of cases we are not actually as caged in 
as we think and we have to take responsibility for ourselves and getting ourselves out of situations obviously there's a small percentage where it's a very it might be a very complicated situation if there's any young women or people that may find themselves in a relationship in the future and um, one piece of advice that i would want you to take away from this it may seem like weird advice but i think that because so many women find themselves in relationships they can't get out of due to the financial side of it. Ability to leave a relationship on that front and I cannot stress enough, I think that every woman should have an emergency fund, not just as a emergency get out of your relationship, like find yourself a motel, a hotel, a short term let, to go to if you make that kind of decision but it's just important in general i think to have you know a hundred or even like a thousand euro a thousand dollars just to put away for yourself because that little bit of financial freedom is sometimes all you need to get out of a situation i feel like it does influence how much you feel like you have the ability to make those kind of decisions i sound kind of pessimistic but if there's anything i've learned from my past relationships is that anything could happen even when you, you think you're all set you never know what's around the corner the unexpected has a way of finding us all and um, i think it's important as a woman to have financial independence full stop thank you all so much for watching i'm gonna leave it there but i'm excited to kind of show what i'm up to for the next few weeks I feel like my time with him is already going so fast like he's in the city now doing like canadian visa stuff and i'm like ah! The vlogs might feel a bit different just given everything and my situation but I feel like I always find something to vlog about um, but they should be pretty active which is nice. I feel like I'm out there and I'm living and I'm experiencing so hopefully I'll be able to capture that in the vlogs. It might mean there'll be a slightly different feel to them but anyway I'm wishing you a wonderful positive week. Jump on the energy train. Everyone watching this video has always so much good energy and if you're feeling a little bit negative or you've made it to the end of the video and you don't even like me and none of you like me but i just wanted to say Bad vibes are heavy we can choose to put them down and just like it's, it's warm over here like let me let me give you a hug content on instagram so feel free to follow me over there if you want to keep up with my daily stuff but if not i will see you guys in the next video bye